Hey there, YouTube. It's Valerie Ranside. Um, hey there, Professor Renton. It's Valerie Ranside. Um, antinatalism. Apparently, it means whatever you can project it to mean. Um, I am an antinatalist. I think that every child is a tragedy and every child should be cared for. It's a question of basically maximizing utility and making people as well off as possible. On a planet of 7.1 billion people, where food supplies are stressed, where energy supplies are stressed, there's not really any need um, to say that we who live in the developed world should continue to reproduce as opposed to well importing people as opposed to opening the floodgates um, to economic migrants from the developing world it is sort of an idea that no 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 our DNA must be the kind that is able to continue to enjoy this first world existence but it's interesting all the ad hominem that, that goes on. Apparently there's a crypto-religiosity involved. Oh, and we're anti-choice. I want to address that one first. Um, I'm not advocating that anybody who gets pregnant be forced to terminate their child. I am, however, advocating a small modicum of responsibility in that Almost everyone on the environmentalist left, um, let me consider myself somewhat on the left, maybe not such a strict environmentalist as a humanist, um, asks people to pay for the carbon footprint of the goods they consume. Uh, if I get Kobe beef instead of, instead of uh, locally sourced lentils, I should expect to pay some degree of premium. Uh, for the amount of carbon I consume so that the government can offset that by producing clean energy technology. Uh, essentially, I should pay and, and uh, suffer the costs of the damage I do to the environment. The average child has a carbon footprint of 20 times that of what a parent will run up in their lifetime. This is, of course, based on standard fertility rates but even if we included one lifetime's worth of carbon uh, footprint, it'd become a fairly prohibitive, prohibitive cost for most. So it's interesting. It's the only kind of massive pollution that someone can, get, can engage in that's subsidized. Um, and of course, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very easy to say, well, what, our children are pollution? No, but our children, like everyone else, need to eat need to have an industrial farming complex. If you live in the developed world, you need an industrial transportation complex. You're going to want one of these uh, lovely computer boxes here. You're going to have a big carbon footprint. Um, and it's not fair of us to starve people in Sri Lanka to death because we really, really wanted a family. Um, it's not. It's not fair to kill people so that our people can enjoy a higher standard of living. And that's where we're at. I'm sorry. There's no level of recycling. Uh, there's no level of, you know, folk festivals that are going to eliminate the, um, the fact that our industrial society is going to kill quite a few people. Uh, we can, of course, follow Gwyn Dyer's example, but unfortunately, the same people who seem to reject the, uh, the technological solutions of the antinatalists seem to be a little bit deep ecologist on that level and think it's arrogant that we do anything to change our environment. Um, you also accused uh, antinatalists of being of being against. Uh, Post-humanists being against the idea that perhaps we should live forever. Um, no, no, by all means, that technology is a long way off, and if it get dis gets discovered in the short run, then all the better that we should have declining population, because we're going to have short-term food stress. 
we just will. Um, you know, we're having trouble feeding seven odd billion people now. We'd have trouble feeding six odd billion people in the future. Uh, though in the long term future, probably not. Uh, this is, of course, what uh, what a lot of anti-Prometheans get lathered about. But yes, um, if you if you raise the price of something high enough, people will supply it. If you raise the price of food enough, people will figure out more ways to make food. So yeah. Um, oh, there's the other one. Um, apparently, we are all in favor of rights for ourselves, and not in favor of rights for the to be born. We only advocate. Um, we we only advocate birth control and retroactive birth control for those who aren't around. I will continue to maintain to anyone, including my parents, if they ever asked me, I shouldn't have been born. Um, and I don't mean on a political level. I mean they were not right for each other, and they were going to have a very unhappy home, and they did. But that's fine. I'm here now, and. Being around, being in someone's phone book, being able to form, you know, complex thoughts, I do have some degree of rights. But people who may potentially have rights in the future, who don't have rights now, we really don't need to count out to theoretical people. Um, it's that simple. I really wouldn't have missed it if I wasn't around. Um, I'd miss not existing now, because I have existed, and I would feel somewhat upset knowing as someone who had existed that I was not existing, but that kind of split consciousness isn't really um, even theoretically possible. Uh, we, we may like to imagine it is, but you know, then we go down the slippery slope of the, uh, of the pro-lifer who demands that they have complete control over women. And I don't believe in control over women. I think that women who accidentally get pregnant, yeah, if they choose to have children, Women who intentionally get pregnant, if they choose to have children, should be allowed to have them. Um, there should be a price for having children, just like there's a price for buying a Hummer. You know, there's a carbon footprint. Um, I don't think that's an irrational idea, that society should not worship at the altar uh, of of the uterus. It's, you know, I know it's a radical idea. Um, that perhaps we ought not subsidize that which we have a surfeit of. But I think it's a logical one. I think people who disagree with me aren't, you know, evil. I don't think they're even horribly wrong. There are plenty of valid reasons why you might want to, uh, why you might want to have children. And there are, you know, there are extant social psychological pressures to have children. But, Raising children is not one of them. Thinking you would be a good mother or a father is not one of them. Aristotle is going to raise an awful lot more children than you will, no matter how many you pump out. Uh, Thomas Hobbes is going to raise a lot more children than you will. Edmund Burke, you know, uh, Gloria Steinem, you know, follower of the mutilation meme when it comes to trans women, is going to raise a lot more girls than you ever will. And you ought to recognize that, that Society raises children a lot more than we give it credit for. Um, parents raise children a lot more than we give them credit for. It's that simple. Um, there's nothing special about your DNA or mine that needs desperately to be perpetuated, that won't have some uh, concomitant variation that will be sh uh, that will be perpetuated by someone perhaps from a developing country with a different skin tone. Um, there's there's really nothing special about the DNA of people who are currently citizens of Western countries that will not translate when we uh, when we have socialization to other people in Western countries. I'm a second generation Canadian. I don't really follow a lot of Irish cultural values. I could care less. I know they're not as friendly to people like me as people in this country, but that's about all I know. Um, oh, and I like single transferable vote. But the point is, where you come from doesn't matter nearly as much as where you are. Um, 
how many of us there are and how much we consumed matters far more than um, someone's perceived right to not have any moral opprobrium for swamping the lifeboat. Um, and the moralists who think that somehow we're going to rejig the entire land ownership system of the Western world in the next three years to uh, eliminate global warming are quite frankly wrong and why haven't they unplugged their computers? Um, you know, the it, it's a pretty classist assumption, frankly, um, that all the people who've been scratching and scrabbling and trying to just barely keep themselves fed and live in a uh, non-surplus society are going to go along with you. And they're just not. Um, it's it's that simple. Don't call me quasi-religious. I'm an agnostic. I couldn't, I couldn't care less what is the one true faith. I couldn't care less what is the one true school of economics. And I couldn't care less what is the one true school of politics. I try to be aware of these things. Um, and I try to apply my philosophy as best I can. Don't call me the equivalent of a pro-lifer. It, it's beneath you. Um, it really is. And, yeah, don't, don't call me a, a bigot when you're speaking from a background of North American middle class privilege. And don't wave your income in front of my face either, because there's a lot of dropouts who can easily earn 80k a year for, uh, for a two-adult household um, and just choose not to. So, no. No, you, you, you don't get this one. Um, there's an awful lot of reasons that people are opposed to a society that encourages the creation of more people than we can already handle. Um, one of which is that real wages have been falling since 1973, and that the Overconsumption of uh, renewable resources, land, uh, hydroelectric, etc., are diminishing um, living standards of the working class, as well as as is uh, class conflict and class theft. But you know, you you can't you can't really attack one and not attack the other. You have a giant blind spot in that case. But oh, I guess you already do. Bye bye.